The promise comes from God. Jesus says, yes, it's for you. And we go, amen. Amen, Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Amen to your yes, Jesus. I agree. Amen. So be it. It must come to pass. So what God promises you is ratified and guaranteed by Jesus in your life, in the depth of your spirit, made manifest by the Holy Ghost. And what begins to happen is God's got promises for you. He decrees them and declares them. Jesus transmits the yes and the affirmation of every promise, and you receive it you go, amen, amen, yeah, God, amen, God wants to bless you, it's a promise, uh, Jesus said, yes, somebody shout amen. amen, that name then is the basis of our promise and our power, everything you need for life and godliness, everything you need to be victorious, everything you need to be an overcomer, everything that you need to move forward in the things of God, everything you need to defeat the enemy in your life, to overcome temptation, to overcome every onslaught and battle, every uh, wall that the enemy tries to put up against you and every attack on your life is all in one name and one name only, the name of Jesus. Jesus, the name that's above every other name, uh, the name that when you speak it, demons tremble. Satan flees. Everything has to get out of your way when you speak the name of Jesus. Uh, Mountains have to be leveled and valleys have to be raised up when you decree and declare the blessed, powerful, holy, glorious, majestic, marvelous, awesome name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the basis for your power. The name of Jesus is the reason for our praise. He said, we praise God, Peter said. We praise God because we bear his name. Now, I like this because, you know, the name of Jesus isn't imposed upon us. It's not something you get a hold of Jesus. Jesus gets a hold of you. And he says, all right, now you have to declare my name. I impose my name on you. It's a law. Speak my name. No. No. It's not imposed on us. The name of Jesus is is embraced by us. Anybody love that name in here? Anybody? Ah, God. Everybody even like that name a little bit. Come on. Anybody love that name? Uh, When I got saved, I didn't cry out to Buddha and I didn't cry out for my mama. I cried out the name of Jesus. And he reached down his hand for me and delivered me out of the evil of Satan's power and release me into the kingdom of light. Everything that you need is in the name of Jesus. It's a name that we embrace. It's not imposed on us. It's not forced on us. We love that name. Anybody in here love his name? Come on, I love to call his name. I love to bless his name. I love to sing his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. The songwriter said, kingdom, kingdoms shall all pass away. Oh, but there's something about that name that name is embraced by us why because it's been given to us you can't abscond it you can't extract it you can't steal it it has to be given to you it's a gift do you know the name of jesus is a gift oh god that's good the name of jesus is a gift to you People use his name in vain all the time. They use it casually. Oh, but that name is too precious. God gave us that name to call on. That at the name of Jesus, that the mercy of God is made manifest. When we call his name, the love of God is demonstrated. When we call his name, the power of God is released into our lives. When we call his name, mercy flows and grace is free. All because of the glory. Glorious, powerful, majestic, and awesome name of Jesus the Christ. If you love his name, give him a praise right now. The name of Jesus is the reason for our hope. And it is the resource of all of of our encouragement. It's the name that we rest everything on. 
You see, when we pray and we ask God and we trust God and we believe God and we put our faith in God and in his promises, how do we end that prayer? We say, in Jesus' name, amen. Ah, God, uh, the name of Jesus is the basis for our hope. And once we release our prayer to God uh, in Jesus' name and we decree amen and declare amen, then hope begins to spring up in our lives. Uh, we begin to, begin to believe that we will have what we've asked God for. Why? Because it's in Jesus' name. Jesus said, in my name, ask in my name and it shall be done unto you. The real name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the real cause of our praise then. Amen. We don't praise the name of a denomination, of a founder of a movement. We don't praise any other name. We don't praise the name of an evangelist or a pastor or a preacher. We praise the name of Jesus. And we use it then to refer to the identity of the one to whom we belong. When you name the name of Jesus, people who know, oh, they, they belong to Jesus. You say Jesus, they're not going to say, oh, you belong to uh, Confucius. No, you name the name of Jesus. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing is, is that being a true Christian in 65 AD when Peter wrote this was countercultural. It wasn't popular. You, you say, oh, I named the name of Jesus, but that, that was an anathema. That was a curse on you. That was something that people ridiculed you for, looked at you sideways about. It was counterculture. It wasn't popular to name the name of Jesus. If you were a true Christian, oh, you missed it. I said it twice, but people missed it. A true Christian. There's a lot of fake Christians. There's a lot of pseudo-Christians. There's a lot of Sunday Christians. There's a lot of once-every-six-month Christians. There's a lot of Christer Christians. You know, Christmas and Easter, Christer. A lot of them folk. But I'm talking about a real Christian. A, a true Christian. I love him. I serve him. I'm faithful to him. Ah, because he's been good to me. Because he's worthy of my praise and he's worthy of my service. And he's worthy of following and he's worthy of me giving him everything that I am. And when I wake up in the morning, I say, God, I'm going to give you this day because you gave it to me in the name of Jesus. I'm proud to call myself a Christian. I am the real deal. I'm not perfect. I don't cross every T. I don't dot every I. And oh, I make a lot of mistakes. But you know what? I love him. I love him. I lo and I serve him to the best of my ability, I'm a true Christian. Amen, somebody. So, you know, in that day it was countercultural, but you know, the thing is that it's still countercultural in 2017 AD. It's still not popular to be a true Christian. You know, when people say, well, let's, let's go party tomorrow. Well, no, I can't. I got to go to church. See, true Christians say, no, I can't. I got to go to church. Fake Christians say, oh, where the party at? I'll go to church next week. Ah, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It's quiet up in here. Y'all ain't talking back to me. No, a true Christian said, I have one obligation first. I got to get to the house of God. I got to worship him. I got to pray. It's his day. I'm going to set that side. I, I'm going to set that tenth aside out of my income. I'm going to serve him with my offerings and my tithe. I'm going to bless God because he's been good to me. I'm going to give God my praise. I'm going to give God everything that I am. I'm a true believer. I will name the name of Jesus and I'll live for Jesus all the days of my life until the day he comes breaking through the cloud. I'm a real deal. But it's not popular today. But the beauty of this is that it's not shameful to be a Christian. The world wants to shame you. The world wants to call you stupid. The world wants to call you ignorant. The world wants to call you short-sighted or not culturally relevant. But the reality is that it is not a shame to be a Christian. Pastor Santino preached it last week. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. No, it's not a shame to be a Christian. No, it, it, my brother, my sister, this morning, it's, it's a privilege. 
it, it's, it's an honor mm. to be able to proclaim the name that's above every other name. You see, one of these days, one of these, one of these moments in time in God's economy, you and I are going to stand in the portals of glory and praise that name forever and ever. And there are going to be a lot of people who use that name the wrong way that will not have that privilege. But all oh, you and I have a privilege to use it even right now. Can somebody say Jesus up in here? Come on, you just want to shout G. Come on, shout Jesus. Come on, give him some praise by shouting his name. Shout Jesus. Open your mouth and shout Jesus. No, bearing that holy name, Peter said, but give God praise because you bear that name. It's, you wear that name proudly. You know, the designers, the, you know, the, the fashion shows and the award shows. Well, what, and they interview, what are you wearing? I, I'm wearing, you know, a, 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 a Chanel. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing, you know, whoever, you know, got all these names. You know, Vera Wang and, you know, I'm, Tommy Wang, I don't know, you know, Bobby Brown, I, whoever, you know. What are you wearing, Pastor? I'm wearing Jesus. I got a robe of righteousness that he gave me. Ah, I got shoes of authority that he put on my feet. I've got a ring that gives me access into the portals of God's glory to receive everything. I'm wearing Jesus. I'm wearing Jesus. I'm wearing, I'm clothed in Jesus. His glory is on me. His glory rests on you. I'm wearing Jesus. Who's your designer? Jesus. No, bearing that blessed name of Jesus is as the designation of our identity is the highest honor you can ever have and ever know. They will give you accolades. They will give you little awards. They'll give you a gold watch and a ham sandwich when you, when you retire. But that ain't nothing like the name of Jesus. Ah, the greatest honor you'll ever have is to be able to just open your mouth and say, I know that name and I know the one who belongs to that name and he's my savior and he's my Lord and I worship him with everything I am and with everything I have. I love his name. It's an honor to speak his name. So the responsibility then of every believer is to praise God and declare his glory. I, I, I said the responsibility. Do you know that God has given you the responsibility to declare the name of Jesus? The world is not going to declare his name. The world declares every other name but his. So he's given the name of Jesus to the church. And made the church responsible for the promotion of the name of Jesus. Everybody say, I'm a, I'm a promoter. What are you promoting? You're promoting the name of Jesus. People promote all kinds of stuff. You know. But there's no greater name to promote than the name of Jesus. And God has given you the responsibility to promote the name of Jesus. Promote him today. Tell somebody about him today. When they ask you the reason and the cause for who you are and what you are and what you do, tell them, I am who I am because of Jesus. I do what I do because of Jesus. I live the way I live because of Jesus. I live today and tomorrow and the day after that because of Jesus. Because he's my Savior, my Lord, my Keeper. He's my friend. He's my closest friend. He's the lover of my soul. He delivered me. He redeemed me. He sanctified me. He justified me he gave me access into the portals of glory and the angels wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life because I called on the name of Jesus <laughs> Peter said we praise God because we bear that name you see listen this morning your praise is the proof of who possesses you 
That was good. That was, I'm going to say that one more time. Your praise is the proof of who possesses you. When I praise God, I praise in Jesus' name. When I speak the name of Jesus, it's because he lives on the inside of me. It's because he's in there saying, come on, praise me. Come on, give me glory. Come on, promote me. Come on, speak my name and declare my name and broadcast my name into the air and into the atmosphere that the glory of my name might be made known and manifest in all the world. And when I do and when you do it's the proof of the one who possesses us that he lives on the inside of us that we belong to him that we are in fact Christian us we are Christians we are the possession of Jesus Christ when you praise when you decree when you declare that blessed holy name everything has to stand at attention and recognize that he is the one to whom you belong the devil knows he doesn't own you anymore the devil knows he has no claim on you anymore hell knows you're not a citizen of that kingdom anymore when you speak the name of Jesus all of heaven comes to attention and God's glory is revealed in your life whoa God So we then, as a church, I'm glad I belong to this church. This is a good church. This is a strong church. This is a powerful church. You come in here sick, you're going to get healed. You, you come in here bound, you're going to get delivered. You come in here troubled, you're going to leave happy. Ah, oh, God. You walk in here with a need, it's going to be met by the time you leave. You come in here needing a word uh, with a question mark on your face. Uh, you're going to leave here with a sure word in your heart. Uh, and that question mark will be turned into an exclamation point in your life. This is a good church. It's a great church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We as a church are more than a gathering of Christians. There ain't, there ain't no Christian rally. It's not what we do. We don't come in and have a little rally. We have a little Jesus rally. Oh, no, no. This is a praising church. This is a glorifying God church. This is a magnifying God church. This is a worshiping God church. This is a lifting up the name that's above every other name church. This is a church that wants to see the glory and the power of God made manifest in the lives of people like never before. And we will settle for nothing less. Oh, we're more than a rally. We're more than a gathering of Christians. We're more than an assembly of born-again believers. We're, we're not only an assembly of born-again. I'm glad I'm born again. Anybody glad you're born again? But we're born-again believers who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're a unique kind of assembly. I tell people all the time. Oh, you, oh you're a pastor. Yeah, my, my greatest compliment was when they said, well, you don't look like one. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, that'd be terrible. You know, you walk down the street, he's a pastor, you know, lame and, you know, crunchy and, you know. No, I'm 66 years old. I still got some pizzazz left. Yeah. Amen. Glory. Amen. I tell people, no, I'm a pastor. Well, what kind of church? Well, um, we're non-denominational. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, you believe the Bible? Yes, we do. 
Oh, you sing worship choruses? Yes, we do. Oh, well, maybe I'll attend. Let, let me just tell you something real quick. We're Pentecostal. Well, what is that? Well, we give God praise with everything we got. We're, we're not ashamed to praise him. Man. We're not ashamed uh, to give him glory. We're not ashamed to lift our hands and shout uh, and stomp our feet and clap our hands and run the aisles a little bit if the Holy Ghost moves us. We're not ashamed. Uh, we're not afraid. We, we relish the thought of God taking over everything we do. Uh, God, have your way. Uh, if you want to slay everybody at one time, go ahead and do it. Uh, if you want to speak supernaturally, Go ahead and do it. If you want angels to show up in the midst of our gathering, have them show up. Do what you want to do. Get some glory out of your people. You're still Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. You're still Jesus, the deliverer of his people. You're still Jesus, Savior, healer, deliverer. That's who you are. We praise your name. And I tell people we're loud too. It ain't one of them quiet churches. We're loud. Because the Bible says to praise him with a loud voice. All right. All you Presbyterians in here, I said the Bible says to praise him with a loud voice. Yeah, that's good right there. Come on, do that right there. Put a praise on it right now. Put a loud praise on it. No, we're, we're, we're unique. We're different. Matter of fact, we're different than most churches that call themselves Pentecostal. Because most churches that call themselves Pentecostal today aren't even Pentecostal anymore. They done left it all behind. They've exchanged their glory. We ain't exchanging nothing. I said we ain't exchanging nothing. We're not trading anything. We're holding on to God's glory. Ah, like that song this morning, we cry for more of your glory. We will not be satisfied with where we've been. We cry for more of your glory. Hallelujah, fill our hearts again. No, we're a unique kind of assembly and we're, we're much more than a body politic or a social gathering. We are a redeemed community of unhindered praise. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. I said, we're a community of unhindered praise. The devil can't stop your praise. The devil can't block your praise. Sickness can't stop you from praising God. Circumstance and situation, disappointment and despair can't get you to stop praising him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I got an unhindered, unrestricted praise in me. Oh, my brother and my sister, we're anointed and appointed, empowered and ordained to praise the living God as the body of Christ. And we will praise our God until the moment that Jesus comes breaking through the clouds. And even then and after that and forever and throughout eternity, we will give God praise. If you believe it, stand on your feet and give God some glory right now. Give him praise right now. Magnify him right now. We're a community of unhindered, unrestricted, unrelenting praise. Oh, somebody shout Jesus in here. Jesus. Lift your hands, shout Jesus. Jesus. Put those hands together and shout Jesus. Jesus. Now say more of your glory, more of your grace, more of your spirit, 
moving in this place. Say, we will not be. Shove somebody and tell them, I will not be satisfied with where we've been. We cry for more of his glory. And guess what? He will fill our hearts again. If you believe it, shout unto God with a voice of triumph.